Welcome back everyone to another game played between Stockfish 8 and Alpha Zero. Because of the great response from the previous Alpha Zero video, I've decided to make another one. So today's game coverage features one of the games chosen by Grandmaster Matthew Sadler, who is a chess author and two-time British champion. So in my previous Alpha Zero video, I think I failed to mention that not all of the games started from the initial board position. In some games, the openings from the TCEC or Top Chess Engine Championship were used. So basically, the engines only started playing from move 12 onwards. However, this game, I believe, was played from the initial board position. Stockfish 8 had white and Alpha 0 had black in this game. Stockfish opens the game with e4, Alpha 0 responds with e5. Knight to f3, knight c6, and bishop to b5, going for the Roy Lopez. So here Alpha 0 played knight to f6, going for the Berlin defense. For some reason it really enjoys playing this opening as black against the Spanish game. So here Stockfish castled, and we head into one of the main lines of this opening, where the queens are traded off the board. So Kramnik has actually used the Berlin defense extensively against Kasparov in the R World Championship match to a great degree of success. In fact, Kasparov did not even manage to win a single game against Kramnik, so it has a reputation as quite a tough nut to crack. So here Rook D1 played. The king steps aside, knight to C3, bishop to E7, both sides develop their pieces, and B3. So that helps to blunt out the diagonal for white's, uh, for black's light square bishop if it comes to e6. It also gives white the option of going uh, bishop to b2. So here black played knight to h4. So these moves have all been seen so far. Stockfish took the knight, bishop takes h4. So in this position the main move was knight to e2 where white would try to position this knight maybe on d4. This bishop could come to b2, so knight to e2 the main move, but here after bishop takes h4, Stockfish played bishop to e3, so this is actually the novelty in the position. So black retreated the bishop to e7. So why did uh, alpha zero do this? Perhaps in anticipation of white storming his kingside pawns because this is one of White's ideas in the Berlin defense to use this kingside majority in hopes of creating a passed pawn. So here Stockfish played the knight to e2, h5, and c3, uh, perhaps anticipating possibly bishop to f5. Here alpha zero continued on with the kingside h4, so that gives his rook more mobility. It also aims to slow down white on the king's side. Rook d2 and rook to h5, looking at e5. So here, h3 played just to stop this pawn from advancing further. So the rook can take on e5, but here probably something like bishop f4. And then white can take on c7 with his bishop. But here I quite like the move king to f1. That defends the knight, freeing up this rook. And after the move bishop d8, which defends c7, rook a to d1. And white has pretty nice coordination for the cost of a pawn. So here after h3, instead of taking on e5, alpha 0 played a5. So trying to play a4 to open up more lines for the rook. Also together with bishop to e6, that would put some pressure on b3. Rook to e1 here from Stockfish, potentially supporting this pawn. So here bishop to e6 developing another piece. So white would love to play in this position, oops, knight to d4, to challenge this bishop. But here black can take on e5, and then take on e6, and he is up a pawn for nothing. So after bishop e6, Stockfish defends e5, a4 plate trying to open up the file. Knight to d4, this gives more protection here. Also attacks the bishop. Bishop d7. 
So alpha zero tries to keep the bishop pair, which could potentially be a trump card for him. So here b4 plate not allowing the rook to become active on this file, but this does allow c5 for alpha zero. And this slightly weakens white's structure on the queen side. While it's true that here white has more space in the center, but it's difficult for him to try and use his kingside majority because of this pawn on h4, which really clamps down on white's kingside. So really he can only try and use these pawns. So here, knight to c2, trying to trade off a pair of bishops. So naturally, alpha 0 drops the bishop back to keep the bishop pair. Rook to b1, looking at b7. So here, b6, knight b4, looking to get into d5, which would target c7. So stockfish gets a little bit of play now. Bishop to e6, this stops knight to d5. But here, knight to c6, nice square for the knight. Alpha 0 plate a3, just to fix that weakness on a2. And this also gives this rook more mobility. So here, Stockfish could have gone for knight takes e7. I'm curious as to why Stockfish didn't play this. Perhaps it thought that the knight was better than a bishop in this position. So here, Stockfish actually played king to h2. A move which I don't quite understand, because if Stockfish wanted to make a waiting move, perhaps it could have played king to f2. This would have made more sense, because the king's closer to the center. But here, king to h2 played. And we have f6, so this tries to chip at the center, also hoping to give this rook more scope. So here, if white takes, this would be good for black, because after bishop, f, uh, bishop takes f6, Black has a very nice strong pair of bishops. So after the move f6, here white can still take on e7. So maybe this is slightly better for black because of the weakness on a2. White has to constantly keep a rook on the second rank because of that. And black's rooks seem to have more mobility here. Uh, but this seems kind of drawish, especially with opposite colored bishops. So here, after f6, Stockfish played rook to e1, so now this threatens some tactics down the e-file. So here, f5 played, stops any e takes f6. Knight back to d4, looking at the bishop, so bishop to d7. Bishop to f2, just looking at this pawn, also threatening e6 in some cases. For example, if uh, black plays a casual move like rook to a4, then e6, bishop c8, and here knight b5. This could cause black some discomfort. So here after bishop f2, alpha 0 played rook to d8. So that meets e6 with bishop to b5. And the knight cannot take the bishop because it's pinned. So what would follow is bishop c4, a nice square for the bishop where it looks at both of these points. So here after rook to d8, rook e to e2 plate, just protecting the rook on d2, possibly renewing the threat of e6. So here c5 plate by alpha 0 kicking the knight back, but note that in doing so, this bishop no longer defends a3. So here instead of defending with something like rook to a8, alpha 0 plate the move g5, just breaking open the position for his two bishops. So what happens if that is taken? For one, this weakens the pawn on e5. Two, this now gives black a new target to attack on g2, possibly on this open file with the rook and a bishop coming to c6. So a possible continuation would be something like rook d6, bishop b5, looking at this rook, Bishop takes d8 just so that both of these points are defended with the bishop. Also gives uh, black the option of going bishop to c7, looking at this pawn. So here rook to e1, bishop c6, looking here. Well, black does give up a pawn after knight takes a3. Rook g5 gives black pretty nice counterplay for the cost of a pawn. So this is still an incredibly complex position, but if anyone has 
winning chances, it's probably black. Let's go back to the game. So after the move g5, Stockfish grabbed the pawn, knight takes a3. And now this is alpha zero's idea. Since white has not taken on g5, now black can push g4. So this now threatens to play g3, which would fork king and bishop. So king to g1, and now g3. So what has alpha zero managed to accomplish here? Well, obviously, uh, black managed to gain more space on the king side. But now with this pawn on g3, this makes life more difficult for the white king to participate in the end game. Plus, white uh, has to constantly look out for g2 because if that pawn falls, then this pawn is awfully close to the queening square. Bishop e3 played now. And rook to a8, grabbing the open file with tempo on the knight. Knight to c4, that looks at b6, so rook to h6, defends that. So black's pieces are not great at the moment, but at least he has a pretty nice rook on the a file. This other rook can soon join in on the queen side on one of these squares to support these pawns. White, on the other hand, definitely has <coughs> issues with his coordination. So you can see that his rooks are kind of stuck on the second rank. This bishop isn't such a great piece, it's locked in by its own pawns. And this knight will soon be kicked back with b5. So here rook to b2 played. Rook a6 defending, defending the b6 pawn. Bishop back to c1, b5. Knight to e3 and rook to a4. So alpha 0 slowly creeping forward, now looking at the pawn on f4. So c4 played, trying to block. And if black takes, which was uh, what alpha zero played, at least this opens up the b file for the rook. So here alpha Z uh, stockfish, excuse me, when knight to d5, this threatens to go rook to b8, which would win material. For demonstration purposes, let's say rook to h7, which does nothing in this position. Then here rook to b8, king to f7, and here rook b7, this wins material. So going back to the game, after knight to d5, here's c3 plate. So now if white goes rook to b8, king f7, rook b7, this appears to win a piece. But this is where the pawn on g3 comes into play. Rook to d4 attacks the knight and also threatening mates on d1, because these squares are covered by pawns. So here white has to go knight takes c3 to cover d1 and here rook to a6. And black has simply too much activity for the cost of a pawn. This rook is tied down to the defense of a2. The knight has to cover d1. So this bishop on c1 is also rather dreadful for white. Black on the other hand can try to bring his bishop to c6, looking putting more pressure here. And somehow, if he can manage to dislodge this knight, maybe something like this, then black will be doing great in this position. Going back to the game, after c3, here white took on c3 with the knight. Rook to c4, attacking the knight, while keeping eyes on f4. White defends with bishop to d2, and rook c6 from alpha 0, now getting the rook behind the pawn. King to f1, white tries to wriggle the king out. And bishop to e6, possibly threatening this. So for demonstration purposes, let's say a4. And here a black can go rook to b4. This frees up the square for the bishop and comes with tempo on the rook. So after rook takes, c takes b4. Here white isn't in time to stop this because the knight is attacked. So bishop c4 and this would win the exchange. So here rook to b1 plate, just protecting the rook with the knight. So alpha 0 plate rook b4 anyway, which frees up bishop c4. So here rook e to e1, avoiding the pin, but bishop c4 check plate anyway, which forces white's king back into the corner, king g1. And at this point you just feel like stockfish is soon going to crumble. Alpha 0 now plays rook to c8, 
a weird looking move, but it has a very simple reason. Alpha Zero simply wants to fully optimize its pieces, so the idea is now to go rook d8, and after bishop to e3, rook to d3, challenging the knight. So here rook c to b1 trying to reinforce this knight, but at the expense of giving up the b file. So here, bishop d3 is a very cute move, just taking away the square from the rook. And you just feel that Stockfish is getting squeezed to death in this position. Knight d5 played, attacking the rook and the bishop. But now black, the black rook comes in, rook to b2. So note that here, knight to d1 can be played to stop rook to b2, but this just looks absolutely miserable for white. So here after knight d5, rook b2, bishop to c3, and now rook takes a2. So material is now even. And bishop to e4 is now a big threat looking at, g, uh, looking at g2. So rook to a1 was played, trying to eliminate the active rook. The rooks are traded, but now alpha 0 pushes the c-pawn, c4. Knight f6 check played, king to d8, bishop c3. Now this is just a matter of technique, rook b8. So possibly preparing to swap off the bishops with bishop b4. And just look at the white king, it's just completely cut away from the action. The pawn covers the square, the bishop covers f1. There's simply no way in, uh, no way out for the king. So here bishop to d4, we have bishop to b4 attacking the rook. So rook d1 and rook to b5, preparing to swap off bishops. King h1 played by stockfish, here bishop c5 anyway, and in this position, stockfish 8 resign. If bishop takes c5, rook takes c5, there's just no way of stopping the pawn, especially with the king stuck in the corner. Black will play the king over to e7, which would unpin the bishop, followed by pushing the pawn. So here, if bishop to a1, there are just so many ways to win this. Maybe just bishop e3 going after f4. If knight, h4, uh, knight h5, excuse me, then king to e7, just unpinning. And now threatening to go bishop to e2, which would fork the rook and the knight. So here, black also controls the queening square with his bishop, and this is just practically lost for white. I hope you enjoyed this game, uh, even though it's not the most tactically exciting, but it's still a very nice win from Alpha Zero with the black pieces. So does this mean that the Berlin defense is the best reply to the Spanish? Let me know what you think in the comment section below. So once again, if you enjoyed the videos, feel free to subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching and see you soon.